Today we're going to make an oil lamp, uh, and this oil lamp is quite unique because it's got a, an individual way that it fits and it works. So we're starting with 17mm tubing, so this is obviously borosilicate tubing, and then to form the width we've got some 6mm, 6mm 1.5mm wall, uh, and these will do the wicks. Um, what we also need tools wise is a pair of, well, glass scoring knife, glass cutters, uh, a ream of tool, and a little bit of 6-7mm rod. Uh, and an old 2mm mandrel. If you haven't got a mandrel, obviously anything that's 2mm or metal, uh, roughly that size, will work fine. So, we'll crack on. We'll just so first off we'll cut the tube. We'll just score this about 10 inches long. So score it with a tungsten knife. And then just wet the score mark and snap that apart. And then we're going light to the light the torch. And this is a minor burner that's working on one oxycon, so you need a reasonably tight plane. So take a piece of the, the sort of rod that you've got again as well, and we're just going to heat the end of the tube and the rod, and just do a very, very crude, simple cold seal. Because it will be broken off shortly after you finish making this sort of plunge. So make sure it's nice and straight. And then we're going to, once it's set nice and hard, we're going to lap, just make the flame a little bit broader and heat about an inch down the tube. So what we're going to do is create a flange. And this flange is quite important. We don't want it to, when you push the two tubes together, or the two sides of the tube together, we don't want it to actually join. We want it to be hollow inside. And this reduces the stress in the glass. So just get the glass nice and warm. Start to round, push it together and round it over, out of the flame, and then just push together to form this plunge. We're going to try to increase the wall diameter by about, I would say about 2mm. So now you increase it to about 20, 22mm. And then going back just after that plunge, now start to heat it. And we're going to shrink this down, and this becomes the neck of the oil lamp. So just let the flame do the work for you. You don't need to, to worry about pulling it off because we want to quite, try and keep it quite a thick wall as it comes down. So let the glass shrink down on its own. And just neck it down to around about 8 to 10 mil diameter. And then out of the flame, just let it cool down. And we'll just pop that down for a couple of seconds. So I'll turn the flame down again. So I've got one that I made earlier. So what I've got here now is I've broken off the rod. So we've just got this little area here which has been necked down to about sort of 8 to 10 millimeter. You've got the flange here as well. So what I want to do is remove this large lumpy bit here. So again with the scoring knife, just score this. Neck it, uh, wet it again, and then thumb behind the score mark, break that off, and we'll just get rid of this little area, it's got a sharp point on, so we'll just flame that off, knock it off, and then we're going to flame that off. So, to finish this oil lamp, first off, we're going to flame this off and square the bottom around about 7 to 8 inches long. Um, there's not a lot of point doing it any longer than this because the draw on an oil lamp is only around about 7 to 8 inches. So if you do a, this type of oil lamp and you do it it's sort of 3 foot long, it's not, the, the oil isn't going to travel up the wick, it's going to run out. So we limit it to like I say 7 to 8 inches. And just heat the glass and then just start to pull it away. And then we just want to make a, a nice flat bottom. You can do a round bottom if you want, but I want a flat bottom and just keep the wall thickness the same as the, the wall thickness on the tube. So as it starts to thicken up, we'll pull a bit more out. And again, this will stop any issues with stress. I'm going to anneal these anyway. There we go. And then just to the neck that we're going to put the wick holder in, just flame that over again. 
and just make sure with your reamer that you've got that 7mm ID. So you can just use the reamer to test that and then get some of your wick glass and then just try it in and it's a reasonably nice loose fit, that's fine, that's as well. Put that to one side, they can go in the kiln tonight. So to make the wicks, we've got some 6mm by 1.5mm wall, but again borrowed silicate tube. And I'm just going to put this 2mm mandrel down the centre, so it's a loose fit down the centre. And it's longer than the tube, doesn't matter if it's longer or shorter. And then I'm going to go about an inch and a half uh, up the tube here. Shrink the flame down a little bit and then just start to heat the glass and very very quickly it will heat up and what I want to do is let this heat up and then just push it together to form again a second flange. And the reason I put the mandrel down the centre is so that the wall thickness doesn't push in, doesn't deteriorate and then turn that around and you don't have to do it this way but just for ease of use and just doing it I'll make a second one at this end and if you have a little production line going it just makes it a little bit quicker so again push it together form your little flange take your, your mandrel out just flame the, the wick holder the bottom now when this cools down again using the Thompson knife just score it across the top around about sort of 5mm, snap it, flame it and what you'll end up with is this little wick holder. So put that down there and again turn the flame down a little bit. If I can turn it off now. So, so after you've flamed the wick what we're going to do is let them cool down about 5mm from the end just cut it and then flame it. And so what you end up with is a wick holder that looks like this one here. So you've got the little flange there, five millimeters above and about an inch below. Then you need to pop down the hardware store and get yourself some either uh, oil lamp wick or some fiber yarn. And fiber yarn is what they use on uh, the door panels on kilns, so it looks like a, a white, almost like a fiberglass rope. And that's we use that as almost like an, a, an endless wick um, because it doesn't burn away. It's the oil burns on top of the wick rather than burning the wick itself. So get yourself some of that. Thread it through the collar so you've got a little bit showing and then at this side leave about seven inches long uh, and then when you've done that put it back put it into your insert um, and what you'll end up with is an insert and I've used uh, a pink coloured oil for this one just to show you that you can see it's been filled up uh, and the wick comes out the top and then you would fill it from the top as well and the wick goes back in. Now this won't stand up on its own obviously um, you know it's not designed to stand up on its own and this is where the uniqueness of this oil lamp comes in and it's a, an idea that you know everyone will love. So it won't stand up on its own and this is where the uniqueness of this oil lamp comes into its own. So what you need to do is take yourself a wine glass, a wine bottle or a spirit bottle, whiskey, vodka, whatever your poison is. Um, I understand some people don't like alcohol that much if you are struggling with it, I am available and I can help you with the alcohol front. Uh, I'm available 6pm to around about midnight each night if you want to invite us around. And the insert will just fit into the top of the wine bottle just like that. So you can turn any bottle, so your favourite wine bottle from a meal that you had, a romantic meal where you may be proposed or something like that, or just a really good malt whiskey bottle that you've got and you want to keep the bottle because it's attractive and just light it up and you can create a oil lamp out of any bottle that you've got. So I hope you enjoyed the demonstration, I certainly am. I'm gonna finish this off. Thank you very much.